Yeah, good day. Today we are discussing the review class of the compiler design till the top down parsing. We first start with the famous cartoon. This cartoon, the, by the precocious child, the parents are discussing some of themselves how they learn language. So what is the big surprise? All the latest theories of linguistics say we are born with the innate capacity for generative sentences. Is that true? That is, uh, when generally we humans start to speak around two and two and a half year old, and but before that the child can construct sentences. They, they can construct nouns, they can detect verbs, and they can construct sentences. And all these things has been uh, maybe discovered by Noam Chomsky. He single-handedly invented this, and the whole linguistics uh, is, is whole the, the grammar and all these things. Not English grammar. English grammar before that. It is a linguistic grammar uh, that is uh, discovered by Noam Chomsky. We are grateful to him. So he is still alive today. He is 92. Recently, his birthday is, is there. That is the background. He's a linguist, philosopher, cognitive science. He has a multifaceted talent. He is also a pacifist. He is also a political commentator. He, like one uh, whole language, uh, all linguistics. I will credit more than 60% credit to him, or more than this, yes. All context-free grammar and all these things, it is meant by him. Maybe later on, context-sensitive grammar, there is sub-portion by others, but the basic language, regular grammar, context-free grammar, context-sensitive grammar, all in, invented by him. Is Noam Chomsky? Yeah. This is, say, we generally call a sentence. A sentence is a noun phrase and verb phrase. Then noun phrase can have complex noun, complex noun, and preposition phrase. There is basically grammar that is maybe the child doesn't come to know in the two and a half. But they they come to know what is noun phrase, what is verb phrase by uh, by listening to the this thing. They learn the in a grammar. They don't have to teach the grammar itself. They learn by themselves. Yeah. This is Chomsky's hierarchy. This is and fortunately, for this is type through the regular grammar. This is context-free grammar. This is context-sensitive grammar. This is the post-complex grammar, like what we are speaking of this generally or type zero grammar. But fortunately, all this grammar have this tuple. Yeah, this is a tuple. The v is called uh, uh, variable. In some books, say it's not n non-terminal. Uh, or v is variable or non-terminal. Sigma is all kinds of alphabets. And P is the production rules, and A is the start symbol. Remember, whenever we are parsing a program, or whenever it is compiled, this program, this is a string, consists of a string of the, say, variable and the operation signal, and this, we have to got it to S. So, that is called parsing. So, so that if it is real, if we, through these production rules, we can come to S in unambiguous way uh, from left to right or right to left, then we say it's a successful, there is no error. So S is the star symbol, uh, you can, the whole program unit you can say, uh, and uh, it, why you can say why not double, no it is S star, the P is the production rules and the production rules will be like this, if it's a regular grammar, left hand side should be single variable, right hand side a, a terminal or a terminal and another single variable. Then we call a right linear grammar or if the variable come on the left hand side, we call left linear grammar, that is a regular grammar. And then the context free grammar because we need procedural grammar, we need to call functions again and again. We have to match left parenthesis, right parenthesis or we have to match if then else, if then. So we need to match the ifs or then and else. So we need the stack, we need the, this context-free grammar. Context-free grammar are two types. One is deterministic context-free grammar, where we can determine when to push, when to pop. And another is non-deterministic context-free grammar, like palindrome grammar. There we don't, we try to, every time in replica, one is pushing, one is popping. If one of them is correct, then I say, yes, yeah, match it. That is a very tough, and it is realizable. It's not realizable in, are very difficult. So, 
so that is the reason the palindrome is not a valid sentence which can be in uh, in our programming languages we follow the deterministic context free grammar so we know when to push one to pop like a to the power n b to the power n language or the parenthesis language we call so this is uh, all programming languages come to this but why not this language like this is a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n we call this context sensitive why context sensitive because left hand side a variable and there is maybe another variable maybe another terminal or something and right hand side any string but remember all this type 3 type 2 type 1 grammar only source symbol can to go inside others cannot uh, but here type 0 no restriction it can be a source variable or any time any variable can go to epsilon that is epsilon production but here it is not allowed so this is called type 0 grammar uh, so this is generally we we are spoken language like this but so that is it is very tough for parsing the spoken language but it is trying uh, it is trying and uh, we'll come to this and here it is a linear grammar we generate why it is called regular grammar or linear grammar uh, it is can be de determined by a deterministic finite state machine and here it is a deterministic Poisson automata non-deterministic Poisson automata deterministic Poisson automata you know parenthesis grammar to the power n b to the power n language looks like yeah same thing here we see say regular grammar this is context free grammar two type push down deterministic non-deterministic and uh, this is uh, to but it should be there should be another is deterministic push down and not deterministic push down yeah this is the formal definition see i have uh, chosen different definition here a n is take for a set book earlier we have told b for variable and sometimes called z n n same thing is a non-terminal so some book will say z for variable some books n for non-terminal non-terminal variable are the same thing this is the this is the uh, terminals list of terminals p is the pressure rule state is star symbol yeah this is the rule uh, this is i'll take it from the extra book yeah this is one of my favorite uh, this issue is owen sorry it's cadmus in here here the deterministic context with grammar it is the complexity n is the number of terminals o n q so that is not possible for compiler writing so if you have a uh, say you have a 10 terminals uh, 10 symbols it will take 2 to the power uh, 10, uh, no, n to the power uh, 10 to the power 3 that is not acceptable uh, here it is a 2 to the power it is a exponential it is a 2 to the power 10 uh, so it is a exponential and it is a polynomial uh, but it is a linear o n it is a polynomial but this polynomial deterministic context free grammar it is not acceptable for programming languages it should be o n so that is the reason we have to deterministic context free grammar we have to take we have to make the production rule such a way so it can be parsed in o n that is the whole tricks of this thing we go for various tricks uh, first of all it has to be deterministic context free grammar first of all any language may have many grammar that grammar should be unambiguous so that from either from bottom up or the top down the tree should be same and only one tree then we call this a unambiguous grammar then unambiguous grammar not all unambiguous grammar can be done in own time some of the grammar which we have covered some day earlier that is grammar most simple grammar it can be done when is grammar is uh, left hand side uh, should be variable right hand side should start with a distinct terminal uh, every rule start with a distinct terminal and then all variables as a gray back normal form and by looking at this distinct terminal we know which production rule to fire and, and that is very simple when but unfortunately not all programming language cannot be put in as grammar that is too restrictive too subset and your program have to lot of many more lines to write and it's tough so we can have more better grammar we go for ll1 then lr1 i'll come to this so that again it can be done away in time yeah That's it. yes that is the another picture you say the linear grammar we see the number of terminals is linear here it is a n cube o n cube but we try to make it a linear 
here it is exponential that is np complete that is context sensitive grammar a to the power n b to the power n c to the power n if you have a number of terminals is n it can be 2 to the power n exponential this is undecidable no algorithm so maybe in our programming language you want to construct maybe context sensitive grammar the most of it 97 or 98 or 99 percent are the context free grammar so it should not polynomial also it should be owned by uh, different uh, characteristics we will love this yes this is chomsky's normal form i have told you this is to favor this is generally computer understand chomsky's normal form better left hand side should be one variable right hand side either to distinct variable or it should be terminal and because it can be binary tree it, the all the decision can be binary tree so this is uh, uh, it is better all grammar uh, at least in within when the compiler compiles it they generally take it in the chomsky's normal form is another form that is also a very useful that is gray back normal form this is two form fortunately all chomsky's norm all context free grammar Uh, can have only source symbol can go to epsilon no other s can go to epsilon no other and it can be converted all context free grammar can be converted to uh, chomsky's normal form two variable and one terminal or gray back normal form where every rule should start with a terminal not distinct it can be uh, any terminal and all other variables uh, number is not restricted to two it can be two three four uh, but whenever this a the terminal is, a, is only one rule start with a another rule starts with another terminal that we call the s grammar then it is comp uh, uh, compiling is very easy if you see the terminal the series of terminal from the left hand side you look at it you can know which rule to fire so it is easy o n that is called s grammar yeah this is s grammar whatever i have told it is a ll1 so why ll1 it is left i am scanning from left and i am taking from leftmost derivation that is 2l is coming i am taking from left i am taking the leftmost and whenever we go lr i taking from left but i go for right derivation first that is lr that is called bottom up approach here is the top down approach i am try to i am reaching from s and matching it to from the left hand side ll and if i go for bottom up lr we go from the right hand side and try to reduce it taking the uh, most reducing it by the uh, from the right side and we can reach s so we start from bottom to reach s that is bottom up and we have uh, source symbol to uh, matching the string ll1 that is called top down why it is called one this one is i can see only one symbol at a time this is the power of a computer if you have seen the turing machine also turing machine also you see it can go only one symbol left or one symbol right and it can write it or read it but only look one so that is the power of one so within that power you can solve all algorithm turing machine but we can say why you cannot solve it by turing machine we are so powerful machine but no but trigger the time turing machine say it can solve but it can take exponential time it can take polynomial time that is not acceptable for um, any program programming has to be parsed by owen uh, turing machine doesn't guarantee turing machine say i can solve but i can look at only one i can go left or right but i can go owen cube for context free grammar any good algorithm you write for any context free grammar it is determined to solve it owen cube type Uh, and another is to if you go for context sensitive grammar bounded to the machine is the left hand bound and right hand bound it is called linear bounded automata it can solve it again exponential time and beyond that 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 is called type zero grammar there is no uh, rules is very difficult yeah yeah this is the i have covered that is the basic block diagram of the compiler this is is part of lexical analyzer lexical is nothing but to, uh, taking the variables uh, various variables detecting the variables from the by regular expression input is regular expression how the integer starts it must starts with a number it may be any number with say 
few more repetitions with number, floating point distribution of decimal. I can express it to regular expression, the variable. It's to start with a, a B, C, like a, this thing, and then maybe a variable or number. So we can match it with regular expression. So a regular expression can detect the lines and put all the everything in the symbol table. This is a symbol table. Left hand side is the variable, and then the ID they received, the ID one and what is the scope of the variable, what type of variable and everything is stored here, not only the variable, even the functions and all these things are there. This is called a symbol table. So lexicon analyzer, it, I can employ in Turing machine, I can employ push down, but I should not because it is unnecessary use of power. Only a finite state machine can detect by regular expression, can fill it up and then uh, it will be like this kind of string then I need a powerful machine, preferably pull down automata, definitely. Um, it, uh, then it can try to get this tree. Uh, this tree is the uh, node, I have told this is node is general operation, and this, this is the arguments of the lift, uh, generally argument, all our arguments, and this is the operation, whether it is equal to plus or negative. So this is, this tree should be unique. This is done by this, input is the, these tokens, the string of tokens and we have to get it a unique tree that is the role of a parser the parser can be can top down or ll1 or ll2 ll1 means i can look at only one symbol at a time ll2 means i can look at two symbols at a time it's more powerful now that it can detect more uh, varied sentence and this is uh, the this is called the top down and bottom up to the two different types of person. Then the semantic analyzer, that is whether the meaning is correct, whether I have not done it integer to floating point or something, some mistakes have done. This is called the semantic analyzer. The whole these three stages is called the front end. Uh, it's called the analysis phase. And then we have have intermediate code generation. It is in any as a virtual machine type of sort of thing. Then we put target machine code generation and then the this is called synthesis phase. So maybe compiling, I am doing it one machine, I will run it on different machine, it may be cross compiler. So all these things is done here, it is called the synthesis when the code is generated, but first thing is analysis portion. We are here, we have, we know access color that does, it fills up symbol table, then the syntax analyzer. We try to check the string of terminals with the IDs and the variables. The variables would be there, terminals would be there. What are the terminals? It should be the star operational symbol. A variable should be like here ID1, ID2, and all this thing. We try to see whether it's a valid sentence or not by what are the rules are given like this. Yeah, yeah this is the, I have mentioned, this is a symbol table, uh, and this is the your program. This whole program, you can see it is S. And, and we, we, these are the string of terminals and the variables. We should match S with the valid true. And this, yes, I have already mentioned this is the symbol table. This is the after lexical analysis comes here. Then syntax analyzer. This is the node point. This is the operation set here. This is a tree, a typical tree. Uh, somewhere, and this is the syntactic analyzer. Yeah, I have told this is analysis portion, this is synthesis portion, this is machine code generated. We are right now here, we are basically syntax analysis symbol. This is a, this thing and then last stage is a semantic. Yeah. Yes, same thing. This is the tree. This is the parsing. I have told you that uh, it can be any deterministic context grammar also. It can be ONQ too slow for large program. So it will go for left to right leftmost derivation, I have already explained. And this LR is left to right rightmost derivation and this is much more powerful grammar. But LR parser is more powerful grammar, it can detect more type of sentence. So basically all our programming languages are LR parser. But we have to understand LL parser, otherwise we cannot understand LR parser. It is more simple, S grammar is one very good example of LL1 parser with no ambiguity, but it is uh, uh, grammar is too restrictive. Yes. This is the basically parsing. Uh, this is 
top down and bottom up this top down first thing one is uh, backtracking I, I, I fire rule say not every grammar is S grammar it start with the same symbol uh, same terminal and with the variable say I, I go this rule firing then say no it's not matching I can I can backtrack and then you can try another rule uh, with the starting with the same that is called backtracking that is go to exponential time and uh, it takes space you know, space so backtracking is not acceptable we will go for predictive parsing we make rules such a way and our parser is such a way so by looking at only one symbol at a time uh, like ll1 uh, we can even not even as grammar we can detect uh, the correct rule uh, then we don't have to backtrack uh, so we are basically uh, uh, even even for top down parsing we should not go for backtracking or that is called another term is called brute force we we try to omit we this is take again it, it does it may not take away in time it may go to in cube and we show go, go for predictive parsing predictive parsing say even if they start with the same sim terminal we can uh, we can predict uh, which one will be correct we can go this. This is a predictive parsing. Yeah, top down parsing, bottom up parsing will go for later. Simply the top down, top down is full backtracking, that is called brute force. We try to avoid, then the recursive uh, descent, and another is we cover it. Yeah, this is a cover in LL, left to right, leftmost derivation. This is 2L, and K means K look at. I see only, and you see, even, even you look at for one. That is also very good powerful. If you go to two, definitely LL2 are more powerful for LL1. Uh, even one is good, two is more powerful, definitely. The top down parcel, TDP with full backtrack, I told brute force, and TDP without backtracking, it is uh, it is recursive descent. Uh, we'll try to go for recursive is also um, is a time cursive. Recursive means it called call again and again. Is a non recursive is the best one because you know recursive recursive is always a time consuming computer using stack. So we prefer the top down with non recursive descent person. This is I have already explained LL1. Yes, this is the grammar. Uh, this, is the whole, uh, this is a set of deterministic context free grammar. There are some portion may be ambiguous grammar. Ambiguous means is we cannot find such a rule so that the tree is unique so again we have to set aside then these are the whole set of unambiguous grammar again you cannot map every grammar to one is to one it is not possible it is um, unsolvable problem too uh, this ll0 or say ll1 this is the ll1 shape it is much powerful even it see it is look ahead with only one it is a more powerful grammar llk definitely more but LR0, uh, the bottom up, is more powerful than LR0. And then say LRK, if you can K look ahead, uh, say K symbol, K maybe 1 or maybe 2, maybe 3, is much more powerful than LL. So that is the beauty of the bottom up parsing. Bottom up parsing is says that I look on the right hand side, try to fire, reduce the string, and try to reach the top uh, with a look ahead LR1. And if you can look ahead too, uh, there is no backtracking. Remember, no backtracking. I can reach yes, and it, it possibly it can do it. It open and definitely will open this thing. And this is definitely unambiguous grammar. So bottom up is more powerful. It can go to many more languages. That is the summary. And we'll see LR1, uh, LRK. There with some uh, modification LR1, which just with one look ahead also it is very powerful. LA, but LALR is reduced, but most of the programming language as uh, here, mm, uh, it will here, it will, might take not ON, uh, it is not guaranteed, I haven't said it is ON, so LR0 definitely ON, SLR and uh, ON, because every, most of the languages are this region, LALR1, we will we'll explain this thing in our later classes, I have told this is LL1, and one simple look ahead, left post derivation, this is a top down. Whenever you see LL, that is a top down. When I see LR, that is a bottom up. Forget about uh, this first tail. First tail is, uh, this is say whether it is coming from left and it, R means whether it is coming from right. When the right, uh, it is a bottom up. 
yeah this is a large person a large person is left to right one person this is the most powerful person technique till now and this is see they say lr1 definitely more powerful than ll1 thank you for your view any any confusion you can come back thank you very much for this